This week on The Watchmen, innovation, technology, defense, biblical heritage, and a rock-solid alliance with the United States. A former Israeli diplomat and a leading Middle East correspondent join us to explain why Israel is not the problem, but the solution in the world's most dangerous region. Israel, uh, as in a humanitarian way, is one of the first responders around the world for earthquakes and natural disasters. Uh, and it, it really, in a, in a practical way, it goes out to help nations and, uh, and is becoming, as the Bible said, a light unto the nations. It's an all-star panel from Jerusalem. This week on The Watchmen, only with Christians United for Israel and only on TBN. And welcome to The Watchmen from Jerusalem. 2018 has already been such an impactful year for Israel and America. Think about it. The U.S. Embassy is moving to Jerusalem. We had a major flare-up between Iran and Israel in Syria. Vladimir Putin flexing his muscles, Hezbollah, Hamas rearming. And on a very positive note, the Trump administration and Prime Minister Netanyahu strengthening ties between Israel and America. You might be wondering why all of this matters to you, why this very complex region matters to you no matter where you live. Well, we like to say here on The Watchman Show that what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. And events in this region have profound implications, not only for the Middle East, but for the entire world. That's why we're so excited today to have a Watchmen all-star panel to break it all down for you. We're joined by Chris Mitchell, CBN News Middle East Bureau Chief and host of the Jerusalem Dateline program. We're also joined by Ambassador Yura Mediger. He's worked at the Israeli Embassy in Washington, D.C. He was Israel's Consul General to the Southwestern United States, and he is a leading expert on the Israel-U.S. relationship. They're going to break down all of the latest developments here and why it matters to you no matter where you live. Let's go now to our Watchmen All-Star panel with Chris Mitchell and Ambassador Yoram Edinger. Well, Chris and Yoram, welcome back to the Watchmen here in Jerusalem. Great to be with you, Eric. Great to have you back, gentlemen. We'll get right into it. A lot going on here in Israel and in the region. Number one, big event coming up. The U.S. Embassy is moving to Jerusalem, finally. Chris, I'll start with you. It seems that other countries are even following mm-hmm. suit now. Guatemala has announced yeah. they're moving their embassy. Why is this so important? It's not only uh, important politically, it's important prophetically, many people believe. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, a lot of Israelis, look at Trump as like King Cyrus did in the uh, Hebrew Scriptures, where he uh, helped facilitate the building of the temple. And now Trump is actually recognizing reality, for one, that actually Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, yeah. and then moving the U.S. Embassy. In fact, my wife and I just moved a few weeks ago. We moved to Arnona, which is right across from the U.S. Consulate, which wow. will apparently be on May 14, 2018, the new U.S. Embassy. So uh, it's, it's a huge deal. And one other thing, Eric, I, I talked to uh, Ron Dermer, the uh, Israeli ambassador mm-hmm. to the United States. He was saying this very thing. Uh, I saw him on a, a trip to uh, New York, and he was saying that uh, many Jews see Trump as the King Cyrus, and they'll they'll thank him not only this year but for wow. generations. Chris, you've got some prime real estate there near the near yeah, the we do. <laughs> opening up. Yoram, what are your thoughts? And the, the thing that's interesting about it, Yoram, one of the many things is that this is Israel's 70th anniversary, the the rebirth of Israel as a modern nation, and boom, May 14th, that embassy is going to move to coincide with that anniversary. Pretty big stuff here. It's a major coup for Israel. However. I suggest that we focus on what's good or bad for America. Relocating the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem constitutes a major boost to America's posture of deterrence in the Middle East and beyond. As long as the U.S. refrained from relocating the embassy to Jerusalem, the perception, and rightly so, was that the U.S. was acting under a threat by Arabs, by Muslim uh, terrorists. The relocation would reinstate 
the U.S. posture of deterrence. Another issue is that as long as the U.S. does not recognize or did not recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital, that forced the Arabs to outflank the U.S. from the more radical side. They couldn't be seen as moderate, so to speak, as is the U.S. For the U.S. to recognize reality would force hopefully the Arabs to become much more realistic in their approach mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. Israel in general, Jerusalem in particular. It's refreshing to see, especially after the last eight years under the Obama administration, that the Trump administration on this issue in particular seems to be acting with moral clarity and truly flexing its muscles as the leader of the free world. Now, you're an expert in U.S.-Israel relations, Yoram. Things have improved, to say the least. What's your take on the relations between the Trump administration and Israel right now? Well, it seems, and it's too early to determine uh, in a 100% conviction, but it seems that the Trump administration is much more in touch with Middle Eastern reality than not only the Obama administration, but series of prior administrations in Washington. Uh, first and foremost, they recognize the priorities in the Middle East. Although rhetorically, Re verbally, the Arabs keep on mentioning the Palestinian issue and the Palestinian uh, plight. In reality, the Palestinian issue plays a very, very minor role in Arab yeah. politics. There is much talk about Palestinians by Arabs, but there is very little walk, and sometimes there is a very harsh and negative walk by Arabs towards uh, Palestinians. The Trump administration has realized that the Ayatollahs of Iran constitutes the number one threat and challenge. Islamic Sunni terrorism constitutes a major challenge and threat. And when it comes to facing those threats and when it comes to preventing the collapse of all pro U.S. Arab uh, regimes, which are threatened by the Ayatollahs like and Islamic like terrorists, Arabia, right? Egypt. When it comes to bolstering those regimes, Israel plays a major, major role extending the strategic hand yeah. of the U.S. and therefore, I believe, the unprecedented collaboration between yeah. the U.S. and Israel. Yoram, you mentioned Iran. We will be talking much more about that a bit later in the show. Chris, first with you, you've been living here in Jerusalem for close to 20 years. Yeah. You're on the ground every day. You have the pulse of this city, <laughs> of this nation, I would say. As an American especially, yeah. you have a unique perspective on it. What's your take on Israelis on the ground? I know when President Trump announced the embassy was moving back in December, there were some thank you signs here yeah, yeah. They were uh, in, in, Jerusalem. in Jerusalem. Is there a sense of optimism maybe among Israelis that, hey, we have a true friend now in Washington, D.C.? I, I think you do see that. We were down in uh, Mahane Yehuda just the other day, Jerusalem's open air market just yeah. before Shabbat, and uh, talked to uh, and asked Israelis uh, this very question. And I think almost unanimously, at least the ones that we talked to, were excited about the embassy moving moving about the new relationship with the Trump administration as opposed to the eight years uh, under uh, President Obama. Yeah. I think they see a new optimism. Now, you certainly do see a minority opinions, but I yes. would say generally I think Israelis are quite optimistic about this. Glad that they, uh, as we mentioned before, that the Trump administration has recognized reality like the city behind us yeah. is actually the capital, uh, the un undivided eternal capital Imagine of the Jewish that. state. It's only been 3,000 years. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're making it official. Yeah, yeah. So they're excited, I think, about what's going to yeah. happen. And I think, uh, you know, just to add to this, evangelical Christians see this move as a blessing to the United States. Yeah. In Genesis 12, it says those that bless Israel would be blessed. And I think this is going to be a benefit in the eyes of many evangelical Christians to the yeah. U.S. as well. It's got to be. Yoram, we talk about that U.S.-Israel relationship. Some critics say, well, what does the U.S. get from it? You know, we, we support Israel and everyone hates us because of that, which is not true, by the way. But You've done a great job in writing on the EdingerReport.com, your great website. You've done a great job of reporting on all the benefits that the U.S. gains from the U.S.-Israel relationship. Talk about how this relationship benefits America and not just Israel. Well, uh, one example uh, are the combat planes which we receive from the U.S. So obviously we are 
extremely grateful to America. But once we received the F-15, F-16, and recently the F-35, we act as America's number one battle-tested laboratory, which improves the hardware which we receive from the U.S. So and this is a training ground for American military hardware, in a sense. And, and one example is the F-16, which we have been using for about 30, uh, 40 years now. I met the plant manager in Fort Worth, uh, Texas, which manufactures the F-16, the Lockheed Martin plant. And the plant manager told me that there have been over 700 modifications in the current generation of the F-16 complement of Israeli lessons, operations, maintenance and repairs. You realize that we are using roughly, roughly 500 American military systems. Wow. Each such system we improve through, again, us being the battle-tested laboratory. Yeah. That saves the U.S. mega billion dollar in terms of research and development. It enhances the competitiveness of the U.S. Uh -huh. in the global market. It increases right. American exports. The bottom line, it also expands uh, employment. And therefore, it's a two-way street, which That's is right. mutually beneficial to both the U.S., the major partner, yeah and the junior partner, which is Israel. Great point, you and that Israeli military edge is going to be very, very important, I believe, in the days to come because we have Iran gentlemen marching across the region. We're gonna talk about after the break with your manager, Chris Mitchell, it's the Watchman. It's Christians United for Israel, only right here on TBN from Jerusalem. Don't move. Wars, terrorism, boycotts, international condemnation, anti-Semitic lies, None of these things have been able to destroy the hope, generosity, courage, and ingenuity of the Jewish state. Israeli scientists and inventors are on the cutting edge of exciting breakthroughs in medicine, technology, and agriculture. For 70 years, Israel has faced overwhelming odds and miraculously triumphed. The Jewish people have not only survived, they have thrived. That's not an opinion, that's a fact. And the world needs to know the truth. This palm-sized snapshot of Israel at 70, just the facts, will help you share Israel's history and accomplishments with everyone you meet. Call Christians United for Israel at 210-477-4714 or go to kufi.org slash facts to receive your free gift. Israel is not a problem for the world to solve. Israel is solving the world's problems. Facts matter. So help Kufi share the truth about Israel at 70. And welcome back to The Watchman from Jerusalem. We're talking to Chris Mitchell, your manager, about everything going on in this region right now. And one of the major developments, gentlemen, in this region is the Iranian axis marching across it, whether it's Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Lebanon. Uh, Iran is hell-bent mm -hmm. on establishing a new Persian empire, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Chris, I'll start with you. We had a major flare-up, actually, in Syria just last month. Mm -hmm. uh, Iran, Israel, a, a drone invaded Israeli airspace. There was a major flare-up there. Uh, talk more about why Iran's presence in Syria is a red line for Israel. It is, because they're starting to uh, establish military bases inside Syria, and they're using the Syrian war in the vacuum that it's created to create that land bridge all the way from Tehran to the Mediterranean. So that is a, the major concern, I think, for Israel right now. It's almost uh, up there on Israel's northern border. They're talking about the next war that could be uh, not only with Syria, and uh, Iran in uh, Syria, but also in Lebanon with Hezbollah. They're talking about a first northern front war. And uh, so it is the major concern. We talked to Renon Bergman, uh, an Israeli journalist, who said that unless something happens, I mean, war seems inevitable right now between yeah. Iran and Israel. Chris, that's a great point because it seems like Iran, again, is hell-bent on establishing that presence in Syria at Israel's doorstep. Israel says this is an absolute red line. That's right. It seems inevitable that that yeah. conflict is coming. Israel's, I'm sure, telling that to the United States. And I think the United States really needs to step up. 
and yeah. uh, and really stand behind mm -hmm. Israel uh, because yeah. this could be this could really upset the whole Middle East. One other thing, yeah. uh, 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 Eric, just quickly, uh, Israel has set up a good neighbor policy actually on the border right now in the midst of the Syrian sure. war. They've treated more than 5,000 Syrians in Israeli hospitals. They're sending Christian medical personnel inside Syria to help the rebels. It's uh, one of the good news stories of what Israel's doing here in the Middle East. Yeah, and Chris, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a little told story, especially exactly, in the yeah. mainstream media right. back in the West, that Israel is actually helping wounded Syrians yeah. and Syrian refugees. An amazing story. Yeah. Yoram, when I think of Iran and its presence in Syria and across the region, I think of Iran's most dangerous proxy, Hezbollah. Uh, Hezbollah shoulder to shoulder with Iran and Russia, by the way, in Syria. Talk about the nature of the Hezbollah threat so people at home understand. Look, this is over 120,000 rockets and missiles pointed at every inch of Israel right now? Well, certainly Hezbollah has been an effective threat to uh, Israel. Hezbollah has been an effective tool uh, in the hands of Assad of Syria to remain in control. And Hezbollah has been basically a stooge of the Ayatollahs in, uh, in Iran. As such, they facilitate the Iranian expansion from the Persian Gulf through Iraq, Syria, all the way to Lebanon and the Mediterranean, which basically constitutes, uh, ex it, it exposes the real clear and present danger to American interest in the region posed by Iran. As much as Iran is a threat to Israel, primarily, it's a threat to the U.S. in the Middle East. The great I Satan. Iran's number one target is not to destroy Israel, which is also a target, but the primary target is to remove the U.S. from the Persian Gulf in order to facilitate the Ayatollah's intentions to topple every single pro-American regime. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Oman, through Jordan, all the way to Egypt, which would bode disaster to America's economic and national security security and homeland security uh, interest. In that uh, context, U.S. and Israel have made up their mind to focus on that threat rather than on the Palestinian issue, the Arab-Israeli conflict, which are very, very secondary to the primary issues, namely to clip yeah. the wings of the Ayatollahs. Yeah, that long Iranian shadow, you are descending upon the region. A scary thought. Uh, Chris, we only have about 30 seconds left until the break. Russia is also here at Israel's doorstep now. They're mm -hmm. aligned with Iran. Seems like they're not going anywhere. No, I don't think so. They came in at that in 2015. They made that announcement to the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, and right now they're they're allied with uh, the Assad regime. Actually, Russia coming in saved the Assad regime right now. And here yeah. we are, seven years into the Syrian civil war. Half a million people have died. 11 million refugees, and uh, Russia right now is playing a key role. Uh, buttressing up the Assad regime, yeah. and actually an, an ally of Iran as well. So this is something the U.S., Israel is going to have to deal with for years to come, it yeah. seems. Talk about Iran flexing its muscles and feeling good about themselves. Vladimir Putin is a very dangerous man. After the break, a little more positive news. Yes, there's chaos here in the region, but Israel is a light in the darkness. You're going to hear more about that after the break. It's The Watchman. It's Kufi, only right here on TBN from Jerusalem. Stick around. If you love experiencing Israel through the Watchmen, I want to invite you to experience it with me in person on November 5th through the 15th. I'll be here in Israel with Pastor John Hagee, founder of Christians United for Israel, and together we will introduce you to the incredible people and places you've seen right here on the show every week. Folks, you don't want to miss this incredible opportunity to see and experience Bible history and the prophetic miracle of modern Israel firsthand. This year is the 70th anniversary of Israel's rebirth as a nation, and I want you to join our Kufi team here as we celebrate this amazing milestone in God's plan. I'll be here to share with you some of my favorite places and stories in the land where Jesus walked. Visit the Kufi website at the link below or call the number on your screen to join me and Pastor John Hagee here in Israel this November. And welcome back to The Watchman from TBN's Jerusalem studio. We're talking to Chris Mitchell, your manager, two top Middle East experts 
on what's happening in this crazy, chaotic region. But it's a region where Israel is an island of stability, Yoram, and we're seeing the world start to recognize that. New alliances in Latin America, Africa, India, and beyond. Talk about some of the good things that are happening for Israel diplomatically around the world. The current reality of Israel in 2018 is an outcome of the scarcity of resources and scarcity of allies in this uh, region. And uh, Israel has developed the old, old Jewish uh, tendency of considering challenges as, and threats as opportunities in disguise. We have to prevail and therefore we innovate and we develop cutting edge technologies militarily as well as economically in the area of irrigation and agriculture and health and medicine and certainly in the whole gamut of aspects of computer sciences the world around us has recognized it. Not only the developed world, but primarily the underdeveloped world, which has considered Israel to be a major, major source, which could pull them up to the level of the Western world uh, today. But as a result, we've also developed very, very productive ties with hostile elements, such as uh, Erdogan of Turkey, probably anti-Semite uh, leader, certainly anti-Israel, anti-US. In the year 2005, the trade balance between Israel and Turkey was roughly $2 billion annual trade balance. Today, it's around five and a half, six billion dollars $6 Namely, even the hostile Erdogan could not miss the big opportunities in trading with Israel. And one example is his son. His son owns shipping lane, which every single day sends ships to Israel, which download Turkish export and upload Israeli exports to Turkey. Erdogan, by the way, we talk about some of the players in this region. He's another one to keep yeah. an eye on, to say the least. Chris, Yoram outlined the great uh, medical, the scientific, the high-tech advancements that Israel's blessing the world with, and mm -hmm. people are, are noticing cyber mm -hmm. is another factor. Talk about something you've reported on a lot here in Jerusalem, the amazing biblical and archaeological discoveries and breakthroughs that prove the Jewish people's ancestral claim to this land. Yeah, yeah. Amazing story. And I just want to say first, Eric, what a privilege to be with you. You really Thank speak you, so well and tell Israel's story in Yoram, which I think is the premier U.S.-Israeli expert. Yes. But as you say, prophecy is really unfolding before our eyes. The city of David is right behind us. Mm -hmm. There is an amazing discoveries going on there as they see prophecy unfolding and they see yeah. the Bible story being verified uh, almost on a weekly or, or monthly basis. Yeah. You see, uh, for example, the uh, seal from King Hezekiah. Yeah. Uh, you see the names of the Bible literally come alive. Yeah. And uh, when you talk about Amazing. as well about Startup Nation, we were at a conference called Our Crowd, which is one of the yeah. premier ways of people can investing in Israel. Thousands of people coming from around the world to actually dig into, uh, get into the uh, startup yeah. nation. We have yeah. literally uh, more startups here in Israel per capita than almost any place in the world. And so you see that as well, part of the prophecy. Israel becoming a light to the nations. One other thing, uh, Eric, is uh, CBN is having a new documentary to coincide with the 70th anniversary of Israel called To Life. And Israel, uh, as in a humanitarian way, is one of the first responders around the world for earthquakes and natural disasters. Uh, and it, it really, in a, in a practical yeah. way, it goes out to help nations and, uh, and is becoming, as the Bible said, a light unto the nations. Yeah, Chris, great point there. There's an earthquake in Mexico City. There's a hurricane in Houston. Israeli first responders are the first ones on the ground. Last question, Chris, as we wrap up. You've been here for close to 20 years. Yeah on the ground reporting the story to the world for CBN News. Good things are, are just ahead, right? It's amazing. I mean, when you look at uh, just celebrated last year, 50th anniversary of the reunification of the city of Jerusalem yeah. behind us for the first time in more than 2,000 years. The 70th anniversary, 70 years ago, Israel was a nation of about 600,000. Today, yeah. it's about over uh, almost 8 million. Uh, and it's becoming not only survived, five Arab armies through the 67 war, the 48 war, the 73 war. It's thriving and yeah. it's a really a miracle to see what's happening in Israel today. Only God. Only God. Only God. Yeah. Chris Mitchell, 
Jerusalem Dateline, CBNNews.com. You are in Edinger, the EdingerReport.com. Gentlemen, thank you so thank much. You. We will do it again maybe this year in Jerusalem. Big year, number 70. After the break, my final thoughts on why all of this matters to you. Stick around. The Bible calls Jerusalem the city of God, where God has placed his name. Our fight in the defense of Israel and the Jewish people has only just begun. Your presence in this auditorium is a testimonial to the nation and the nations of the world that Israel is surrounded by friends in America that will stand with them against all odds. Your going to Congress is a righteous act in the courts of heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, you are part of a movement right now. If you are here tonight, it is not by coincidence. Christians United for Israel is by God and for God. King David said it this way, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Welcome back. We are wrapping up from here in Jerusalem. Thanks again to Chris Mitchell, Yoram Edinger. Wow, folks, such encouraging, exciting things happening right here in the land of Israel and here in Jerusalem. The Bible says that this is the city where God Almighty has chosen to write his name and dwell in forever. God is moving in this land and our team at Christians United for Israel has a front row seat. We are the world's largest pro-Israel organization, over four million members, and growing every day, standing in the gap for God's people and God's land for such a time as this. We want you to come to our Washington, D.C. summit, July 23rd and 24th. It is going to be an amazing event. The kind of great analysis you heard today from Chris and Yoram, you'll see it at our Washington, D.C. summit. It's July 23rd, 24th. Go to CUFI.org and use the discount code WATCHMAN. Remember, WATCHMAN, that's M-A-N, $75 to attend our CUFI Washington summit. For Zion's sake, we will not remain silent and we want you to be a part of this movement, this mighty move of God. We'll see you in Washington, D.C., but in the meantime, thanks for joining us this week from Jerusalem. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.